The Siege of Limerick is one of the most significant and historic events in this city's past. In August 1691, beset by William III's forces, the Jacobite defenders retreated behind the walls of the city, and one of Ireland's bloodiest sieges began. But that was then, and this is now. Limerick City is home to Ireland's largest and most distinguished metal festival. Twice a year, during the Easter and October bank holiday weekends, hundreds of fans travel to Dolan's Warehouse to see some of the biggest names in Irish metal. During its eight-year reign, the Siege of Limerick has attracted a host of acclaimed international acts and continues to cultivate a reputation as one of the most sought-after gigs in Ireland. But where does this all begin? When I was quite young, when I was about 17, 18, I noticed that there was kind of a void in Limerick. It was kind of in that spot where a uh, few kind of large venues in Limerick closed down and there was no gigs happening and there was kind of a lull and me and two of my friends, Shane and uh, Kieran, decided to start doing gigs. Uh, Bad Reputation Ireland, it comes from a Tin Lizzy song. Nobody's ever asked me that. Uh, it's a, well, it's a Tin Lizzy album, uh, Bad Reputation. And Bad Reputation was taken, so we just did, we did call ourselves Bad Reputation Ireland. We're a collective, um, we're not for profit, um, we do it as a hobby. So it's me, uh, Kieran Culhan, and a kind of uh, member that's in and out, but he's, we, I still very much count him as a member of Bad Rep, which is uh, Shane, who lives in Cork. He hasn't been involved with us properly for about five, six years, but he's the person that got us initially sitting around the table. And what it became then is kind of because of all of us working in different guises over the years. I'm kind of at the helm of Bad Rep for the last five years, five, six years. It's going about seven years. Uh, and we're just, I suppose, we're the glue that brings the Limerick Metal scene together. And we, 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 we run gigs, we run them very honestly. We try and run them as cheaply as we can. And we try to be as nice and as fair to bands as we can. I, I think metal is a very, very interesting uh, genre of music. Because um, obviously there's a whole range of sub-genres uh, contained within that. I mean, you know, things like even grindcore or death metal or, 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 or black metal or trash and all of these different kind of sub-genres that, that, are, that are aligned under this one large umbrella of, of metal. Um, and I'm, I'm by no means an expert on metal, but I think what does make it different is that there seems to be a real um, collective identity where pi by people identify themselves as members um, and people go through um, and again drawn back in subcultural theory it looks very much young people but I find what's quite interesting about metal is it's almost it's not quite a lifestyle choice but it is almost a life choice where, whereby people um, might become a metaler in their teenage years and they continue that on throughout their adult life I think to look specifically at something like the, the Siege Limerick, um, I think that, that, that obviously attracts quite a different um, audience to maybe um, a nightclub that plays commercial music. Um, and you can see that's kind of articulated in a number of different ways. And I think you can, you can certainly um, ad adapt subcultural theory to looking at, at, uh, at metal music in general, because what you find is there is this kind of um, correlation between music style and identity and um, whereby people who are into metal music tend to you know often dress similarly and um, so before used to be a lot of leather jackets or denim jackets with patches and things like that and and black t-shirts and hoodies long hair facial hair sometimes as well um, you're kind of you're, you're you're fitting the stereotype a little here um, you know so there's, there's certain kind of clothing and expectations um, and uh, you know kind of non-conformist as well and that's what you find in a lot of kind of um, subcultural or um, rebellious music activities is that it is um, by they are by their nature anti-mainstream I suppose um, and, and you can find that certainly in terms of metal music. The siege isn't for uh, like and this some people actually call it but other, I think it's great because uh, it's a day out for a lot of the local limericks so we've got three we've got three crowds we've got the people that come for the bands um, we've got the, the bands themselves and their kind of entourage 
um, and that the people that come to the vans would include the international contingent. Like there's about nearly one eighth of the crowd is international now. Amazing. Like. And then you've got the people that come for the crack. And I have no problem admitting that some people just come for the crack. Like as in I'm not elitist enough to think that everyone is going to be oh, they need to like the metal bands, they can't be here if they don't like that band. No, as in, like, it's a great day out, and I want it to be a great day out in Limerick. And we've done it DIY, like, we haven't had support from, you know, the council, we haven't had support from, you know, tourist boards or anything like that. We very much, we didn't, City of Culture didn't even touch off us, you know, as in, like, and so much so that we kind of said City of Counterculture when we were doing our thing. I, I think what's really interesting, and I, and I don't think people... Uh, in Limerick, in kind of higher powers, um, I'm talking like a council level or uh, chamber of commerces or whatnot, um, I don't think they recognise um, the economic benefits of something like the Siege of Limerick. Because if you go to the Siege of Limerick, you see that people are getting uh, buses from Cork, Galway, Belfast, Dublin, um, and other places. They're um, spending money in Limerick City hotels and Limerick pubs. Uh, Limerick venues, obviously, in the case of Dolan, um, even the tow pass up, up the road is probably up the road is probably having like a hike in chicken rolls being sold on the day. Um, so there is an actual economic, real economic benefit to it. Um, but it's obviously very, um, even though it takes place in probably the largest venue in the city, it's still quite an underground event in a sense. Kieran is all the tech side of stuff, and he's absolutely invaluable. Uh, with, with that sort of thing like I really I need him I remember there was a conversation we had where he he said to me oh you 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 take it you like you do everything for the siege like I actually feel like and like he didn't say it in a bad way he was kind of like I he, was, he almost felt a bit bad that he hadn't done anything uh, for the booking part and I was like Kieran the day would fall apart if it wasn't for you like started playing with my Joe I, I have the twin brother so like we started playing music uh, we got into metal we started playing with some friends, um, and like t one thing led to another. We set, we formed, we formed a, ba a band. There was a bit of talk on Metal Ireland, uh, like the website, um, about running gigs, and uh, I chimed in, and uh, they, uh, some of the guys from bands down, down in Cork that I knew, the likes of Faroon and Sirocco, um they saw my post and they were like, oh, this guy's running gigs in Limerick. So then they contacted me via PM on Metal Ireland and asked if I'd be interested in running shows for them, uh, to put putting them on in Limerick because they were looking for a gig. So that's how I got started, really. The more people kind of started asking about putting on gigs like you know, in Limerick and then shortly after that, uh, Shane got in contact with me and everything just kind of snowballed. It was always metal, that's what, I li that's what I listened to, so it was always metal, like you know. I bring um, uh, the technical uh, side of things. Uh, I have like a lot of equipment, so I supply that, and then like I work as a sound engineer, so I know how to go between the venue and the bands in making sure that everybody has the right equipment, that they know what time they're supposed to be there, that the venue has enough microphones, and that uh, the engineer has all the information that they're going to need in order to make sure work, particularly with the Siege, where you have like 30 plus bands, so then you've got you know, an awful lot of um, technical stuff. Like, I mean, a normal, regular band gig, you, you'd be talking three or four bands, so you know, the equipment is a lot easier, but it's, just, it's more the same kind of thing, just on a much grander scale with the Siege, because you've got like 30 bands. So, <laughs> do you know, like, uh, we need an amp, we also need an amp. Those bands are playing at the same time, how are we gonna make this work kind of a thing. So what do I bring to the Siege? I kind of keep my pulse on what's going on in, on the underground metal scene. We are an underground metal event and the booking part of it, you need to be a little bit of a good cop and a bad cop. So at times I'm the good cop and at times I'm the bad cop. And like when you're running gigs, you need to have an idea they're going to work. I think the Siege is a phenomenal event. I think it brings the metal community in Ireland together in a wonderful way. You get all kinds of talent from Ireland and from abroad and it's just, it's. The atmosphere is buzzing every time. I feel like Siege is a lot of fun and it brings a lot of people closer together that like the same type of music. I love the Siege. I love the Siege. Just, it's, everyone gets together, get to listen to bands, meet friends, have the crack, and it's, it, the Siege is the Siege of Limerick. Come hell or high water, money or no money at all, I wouldn't miss it for the world. It's just great crack. I think the fact that the Siege is free 
is huge. You know, it's like the bands, like world class bands, like headline it. You know, and the whole job, and it's it's really is like the best bands in Ireland. All ages, you know. Uh, you know, I, I think it's it's if you want to experience like live music in a sort of community thing where everyone's really involved, everyone's really happy to be there, and really want to see the music and like everyone's having a good time. It's like yes, one of the one of the best things I've seen. The fact that you have a choice three stages I mean you can just go between either you don't like what's on the, the main stage you go upstairs you go downstairs it's gonna be something for everybody you know so I think Siege is so popular because it's an alternative gig it's great atmosphere it's great music and it's free of course and everyone always comes to free gigs I definitely think that part of its success has been uh, the free in thing that uh, we just like it's something that we used to do with all of our shows every gig used to be free in uh, we had like Met Laughter Mass was our was our uh, weekly gig that we used to run and they were always free in and when we did the first siege we said we'd go free in as well and I think it's something that's really helped us because a lot of people I mean a lot of people are like oh it's mad how do you do it for free and you should charge a fiver or you know you should take it out or whatever but I think what, what it does is it allows us to get the people who are curious to come in and have a look. And once they come in, then they see what it's like and they're like, ooh, this is cool. I mean, I've met guys from uh, alt rock bands and indie bands and like, you know, some of the more, like I suppose you'd say, normal bands. They'd, you'd find them wandering around the siege, like, uh, you know, uh, and, you know, you'd, I, I'd know them, so I'd stop up and have a chat. and. It, they always have such good things to say about it and they'd never come in if they had to pay like I mean and I think that holds true for a lot of um, a lot of people. It's it's the major point of contention um, like there's been a few big metalers in Ireland like I suppose the like bands like Primordial and stuff like that that have asked me oh why is it free like and stuff like that and lo everyone I get asked at every interview I've ever done I've got asked why is it free Um it started as free because we wanted to have like you know, a, a local day out where it didn't matter because I was saying like unemployment was very high in Limerick. It didn't matter how many euros you had in your pocket. You could come in and enjoy a few bands, have some crack with your mates and everyone was on an equal footing. And if people are annoyed that it's free in, in, in other parts of the country, fuck them. Yeah, we get all sorts of uh, bands playing, playing at the Siege. There's a pretty wide range of um, stature, I guess you'd say. Um, we get bands that are all the way up to international touring bands. I mean, the likes of Primordial, who are like, they're, they're an Irish band, but I mean, they're, they're massive. I mean, I, I saw them play to uh, like 15,000 people in a uh, big marquee in Belgium at a festival, and then to see them play in front of like, Six, seven hundred people in Dolan's. I mean, it's a diff you know, it's a different atmosphere. It's fantastic. We were playing the main stage for the first time, so it was the sound was amazing and a big room. People there as well. There was mm -hmm. a lot of people there. Yeah. Mm. The so bass sounded fucking brilliant as well. Now, oh, yeah. usually when I'm playing, it just sounds like muck for me, but it sounded absolutely deadly today. So, say, so you don't really have to run the number one anyway. Yeah, <laughs> nah, it's deadly though. Like you're not a fan. They don't have not the fans. One say that sounds real. <laughs> the punters now, but the people that come here are just, they seem to just be the best of people who like the music, like they actually are. It's like, someone said to me, it's like they're knocking stuff in for metal or something like that. Yeah, people come really far and wide. Sounds like it, huh? To the stage, so it's great. And um, you wanted to see Megacom there, good friends of ours. And be, not only like, just to be here, but to be on the poster with those bands, you know what I mean? To be on the back of that t-shirt. It's amazing, you know, so yeah, we're, we're delighted, you know, and uh, we'd be big metal fans, you know, a long time. So we're, we're really happy to be involved. This is it. When it comes to metal and hard rock, there's, there's nothing else. There's gigs on all over the country. There's nothing comes close to this. People don't get excited for, you have your likes of your Dublin Doom Days, Day of Darkness, you know, all these things that happened over the years. They were great, but they all fizzled out. Because it all boils down to dollars. Simple as, you know, the, the fact that after these years, that this siege is still free entry is great help from Dolan's of course, but it's down to the bad rep lads. They know how to run a good show. The siege is the, is the gig to get in the country. If, you're, if, you're, if you get asked, look enough to play the siege, I think every band that plays it takes it extremely serious. It's a showcase as well, like, you know, as in, it's a big day for a showcase. Lots of bands contact us, they say, right, we've got an ECD, we want to launch it at the siege. And I'm like, that's absolutely brilliant. And like, they sent me a link, I listened to it and I said, yeah. 
and that's worked. Like if you look at like a band uh, like Rabovich of the North, uh, they had an awful problem getting out of Belfast, you know, and, and the siege was a gateway for them to the entirety of Ireland. Classic heavy metal's on the rise as in, in popularity, and they are a classic heavy metal band. And they, they, I think they shifted like 400 euros worth of merch at the last siege. Like, is it, you know, that's amazing. Like, a, low, a national band selling t-shirts to young people, to adults, CDs, everything like that, and they're building a new audience. Fantastic. So I think at the last siege we, like, and this wasn't counting, this was pointed out to me by somebody else, because we're not, we're not like an equal opportunities person, we just didn't know this. Apparently there was like seven drummers, female drummers, in, represented out of the 30 bands. Like uh, somebody pointed out to me, I didn't, I didn't do that. I didn't do that on purpose. I didn't go right. Gender quotas have to not look like it's a load of men. I've never had, I've never seen a negative reaction at the siege to any bands really. And I actually, when there is female musicians on stage, I notice that there is a lot more cheering and clapping. And I think it's because it's shaking it up a bit. It's different, and you know there is a girl in the band because I think the people going to the siege are all pretty progressive, modern. Open, like open-minded, equal, you know, and that's one of the reasons I love the siege as well. Like even going as someone, who, I'd go down on my own to the siege, and I'd be quite happy if I didn't see anyone I particularly knew for a while. I'd still be quite happy to watch a band and stuff like that. So when you have that kind of an atmosphere, you know, if there's you know female musicians around it, they're going to be encouraged. I think more like there won't be this kind of well, let's see, is she any good? You know, this kind of thing. Um, but I think it's like, oh, cool. There's a you know, there's a girl drummer, or there's a girl guitarist, and if the girl is a lead guitarist, the place goes mad then because you know, it's so unusual and you, the people actually really, really yell and cheer and clap and, yeah. It's great. It's great. Uh, great for drinking as well. Yeah, it's great for drinking. <laughs> great to see different bands. It was a long day. But yeah, you know, it's something different. It's good, though. There aren't that many kind of alternative festivals in Ireland, so it's nice to do something yeah. different. As you can see for yourself, a lot of people turn up for this event, so there's a lot of people that love rock and, and heavy metal music. So I think that there is an industry in that, so I think that that's something that Limerick needs to focus on. The future of the siege is we're going to continue doing what we're doing. We might, we've, there's been talks of trying to maybe expand it a small bit, but we don't want to completely change it. So um, a few exciting things planned for the next siege maybe for the first time a few american bands and like we're just a big lovely happy family of metalers and people don't really get that but we're probably a very sound bunch of people can't call yourself sound can you no we're all right Here we go. This is why the siege is popular. Great bands and it's an all day drinking festival with your fucking mates. That's kind of the cool thing about it. And, uh, and uh, I've always uh, really enjoyed that. <laughs>